Hey everyone, Joey G with Touch of the Brush Model Weathering and welcome to this monthly update for December 2020. Touch of the Brush Model Weathering welcomes you to follow us on all social media platforms. We post almost daily showing you our project updates, upcoming clinics and videos. If you would like a project completed by us, you can contact us here at totbmodelweathering at yahoo.com. I hope everybody had a great holiday season and were able to spend time with their families. December 2020 has been a very interesting one in that a lot of new stuff has been going on and a lot of exciting stuff to go with it. And so with December 2020, I have a few of these models that I'd like to show you that I did for some of these clients and uh, we can check these out right now. As you can see, I'm really getting into the graffiti. I'm really enjoying it, actually. And uh, I can't wait to learn more techniques on creating graffiti by hand, rather than using decals. And so that's an added, um, an added service to the business. And so if anybody wants graffiti done, just, just let us know. And we'll start applying that on your rolling stock of locomotives, or even structures. Another thing with Touch the Brush Model Weathering, we have been invited to participate in another NMRAX virtual clinic. And this one, I used a paintbrush and a blow dryer to show you how to do simple fading. And I really had a great time learning um, how, to, how to really uh, do this little technique and show everybody virtually all over the world. It's really, it really was a great time. And I want to thank Gordy, Marty, and Speed, and the others for inviting us to be part of this great, great um, program because it started about nine months ago when the pandemic started and it's really just completely changed the model railroading um, hobby and virtually how we do how we do things and how, how the NMRA uh, reaches out to these new modelers and we actually had a, we had a really great time these past nine months and I really look forward to doing more in 2021. Another thing with virtual, re, uh, about to say virtual reality, <laughs> I guess we are living in a virtual reality, but virtually I am also now the social media representative for the new tracks modeling program hosted by Jim Keller, who is a master model railroader. I am part of a great team of model railroaders and we interview modelers who have small up and coming manufacturer, uh, manufacturing, up, I'm sorry, up up and coming small businesses or uh, have a small manufacturing company and uh, even a train club. We are inviting everybody and anybody in the model railroading hobby who has a small business or a small manufacturer who want to expose their business. We do train shows. We do um, Wednesdays and Saturday evenings. We also invite folks to come on and we have special guests. We do quick tips and we have just a good time those evenings where we sit and talk model trains. And I really want to thank Jim Kello for inviting me to be, include me to be part of his team. It is a lot of fun. I'm having a great time working on social media. I love marketing and social media, so this is a lot of fun. And I wish and I hope that everybody gets a chance to check out. I'll leave the links below in the description and right below me right now is probably the website as well as the Facebook and YouTube links. So check those out. For the month of December, Railfan X has been pretty busy. We've done some photography for the Arkansas Missouri Railroad's 2021 calendar. I believe the excursion are gonna do one this year, part of the J. Riley Transportation Museum. And that Barton Jennings was really popular on the Facebook page. I'm so happy that a lot of people were interested in hearing Barton Jennings' story and how he got started with railroading and transportation. He is a very successful man, and his wife is a very successful journalist as well. 
and he explains that I believe in, 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 the, in the interview and so um, I really had a great time interviewing him and he is a great gentleman he only lives like 20 minutes away from me so uh, we hope to get in touch and maybe have a cup of coffee or lunch some point also Rail Fan X, I'm still working on, on that Chattanooga subdivision video that video is almost done I mean I'm very very close it's over a hundred clips of trains and some other stuff that's in there too some history and it is going to be about 40 minutes in length I'm trying to short it down a little bit more I know we don't have the biggest attention span in the world anymore when it comes to videos but this is something that is more of a documentary and you know, maybe a, a traveling journal more than just a rail fanning video because it has history and narration and all that stuff with it too so it's almost done I would say it's about 80% complete and I look forward to everybody seeing it very very soon on YouTube also I'm working on a few more videos and that includes highlights from 2010 all the way to 2020 and just all the crazy stuff I've seen rail fanning that, that whole decade and I mean some awesome crazy stuff so with that I'm gonna pay I'm gonna turn around here and I'm gonna show you something that I have been working on for the past month oh my goodness there is a train layout so I really wanted to accomplish a 4x8 train board but because of the space I cannot reach all the way in the back and so I decided to cut the board in half and so I took the this section here and made an extension on the left side so made it about an eight and a half foot uh, layout on one side and this is about eight feet going this way as well and this is going to be a point-to-point -point switching layout I'm not sure on the name just yet I think Evans Junction after the town of Evansville where I live um, may be the name of it um, basically it's going to have the main line here it's gonna go all the way this way and it comes around all the way down here past my clients locomotives and so with that I will have six axle locomotives running point to point um, where the cutoff is right here there will be a cassette that I could put up and take down when I want to do some operating sessions and it'll be another five feet of that with a staging yard so uh, trains could be pulled out or, or, um, or they could go, out, go in and out of the, uh, the cassette and then we just do a bunch of switching and this is based off like five different kind of track plants which I'll have in another video but here um, is some of the uh, industries that I'm working on here that's trying to figure out what I would like to have and I may have like the Appliance Express like I had back in Nashville where I had coil steels on one side with box, a couple box cars and the other side maybe some scrap loads and it comes along this way here and over here will be a I believe I think a cement or sand industry and it will come along this way here engine facility will be where that locomotive is that Conrail engine and also a programming track to program trains with DCC. The main line continues there, so it's the, the, the runaround. And back there where that Union Pacific engine is, there will be another industry, which is a bunch of boxcars. Uh, maybe paper or maybe a brewery, I'm not sure yet. But and then coming over here in the foreground, there will be an industry for tank cars, probably corn syrup or ethanol, I'm not sure yet. I have a lot of tank cars in my collection now, which I'm very proud of, and so I can't wait to switch out tank cars. And taking the other half of that layout, I am put it up here, and working on an eight, an eight foot long layout that would go all the way to where that really, really bright light is. And I'm gonna be building, probably might do the time savers track plan, if not, there is another couple of plants I'm looking at that are very similar to that. And I may make this a very industrious layout that's just pure, obviously pure switching cars in and out of industries. So I'll have two layouts to work with. I may connect that main line and have those cars that need to go out may come up here and placed up here to continue switching. 
by hand, of course. But we will see. But this layout, I'm going to be doing blogs and video blogs. I am planning on writing articles. And so I have a video that I'm working on right now was to fill in all the gaps of the foam here. All the different foam. I know that exposure is really, really bright. I apologize for that. Um, but yeah, and it's it's the layout is is, is held by these um, these uh, two by fours, and um, I don't think they're gonna, they may not be permanent, but for now they are to hold up the layout. The floor is unsettling on the bottom, and I don't, we don't trust it, so we decided to go. Um, a cradle base type of construction. I know it's very very bright and I apologize for that but yeah this is the start of a layout finally starting a layout and so we're very excited and we will have tons of videos including operations and how to's and and all it's just oh it's gonna be great I can't wait and scenery oh the scenery this is gonna be a more of a rural um, small town industrial layout as the top will be more of the industrial city base which I've never really done much scratch building or a structure building before but I can't wait to start learning and learning new tricks and skills so there you have it this is the layup maybe Evans Junction I also have some very very interesting news there's a gentleman named Larry that lived in Lincoln Arkansas and I met his wife at Ace Hardware Larry passed away last year and he had a huge train layout. He also was a Burlington Northern engineer and he has tons of Frisco documents and hats and t-shirts and jackets and all that memorabilia. And Linda, his wife, talked to me about Larry and he was in the closet model railroader. He never been to public with his model railroad layout. And we have a few friends of ours that I actually just became friends with. They have a lot of pictures and videos. And so I'm hoping to have a video of his layout very, very, very soon. And that will be a tribute to Larry and Linda. And unfortunately, the layout was torn, torn down. And, but the collection has been split. He had over 3,000 pieces of rolling stock and over 100 locomotives. And he also had about 15 boxes of model railroading and train magazines and they include model railroader model railroad craftsman cow catcher trains magazine all the walters catalogs some old scale stuff and this guy had it all and i think it had it all the way back to the 70s and some magazines from the 50s and the gentleman that i just became friends with he um, invited me over and told me to pick whatever magazines i wanted to take as much as I want and I took about three boxes load of them and able to combine them to where I was able to make some room in his garage but the gentleman is also a model railroader which is pretty cool and um, him and his wife also do modeling as with um, structure building and art and they're also musicians so it's really cool to have that in common and I would like to do a video for Linda and Larry like I was saying but the coolest part is that I'm able, I have the issues of the Virginia and Ohio as well as just about every issue of the Utah Belt. And these were my favorite layouts growing up and I still look forward to seeing more articles about them. And as you can see, sneak, I took a little sneak peek by the, the layout, I did create a Virginia and Ohio boxcar. And so we'll talk a, bit, a little bit about that in the January 2021 monthly update. And so with that, I wish everybody Happy New Year. And we say a lot of prayers for our world with the pandemic and our country as well. And I hope everybody has a great new year. And stay, look forward to more videos on the train layout. It's so exciting to say that and also for more rail fanning stuff. You guys take care. This is Joe G. Touch the Brush Model Weathering.